Welcome back. Now, climate change and global warming, when raised, seems some far foreign cause that does not affect the average Nigerian. How does climate affa um, change affect us? So we're being joined by Tiwala De Adeni. He's an assistant manager in the Sustainability and Climate Change Unit of Price Waterhouse Coopers. He has over seven years experience in environmental and social sustainability consulting. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways. Send us an SMS or a WhatsApp message on 0818038463. Thanks for joining us, Tiwala De. Yeah, it's so good to be here. <laughs> now, <laughs> climate change. <laughs> and let's start with a basic, you know, explanation to every layman out there. What exactly is climate change? Okay, um, so we'll try as much as possible to use layman terminology yes. to make right, people understand. Do. And um, so just like we've been told when we were growing up about weather, mm -hmm. weather, weather, I mean, weather yeah. is, I mean, just things that you see your normal rainfall and temperature but uh, climate now comes in this sense whereby you have the weather over a long period of time so you can be mm. able to predict so this is the climate of lagos so once that climate begins to change that is what climate change is about so we're trying to say what we've been able to record for a long period of time that this is what a particular state a particular location should have over time that has changed and that's the basic definition of climate change mm. awesome okay Right, so what, <laughs> what exactly are we doing to bring about these things? I know yeah, I mean, we're not planting trees enough and we're not doing so many other things, but are there more things that we're, what exactly are we doing wrong? Okay, so uh, for that, uh, we need to first understand the, the phenomenon. I mean, okay. what makes the climate change? And right. that's where you now hear people talking about global warming, global warming, mm -hmm. global warming. So uh, global warming simply means that the earth is getting warmer. But we shouldn't make this seem that everywhere is going to get hot. And that's, right. again, where people seem to um, mix up the bubble. Mm -hmm. The earth is getting warmer. It doesn't mean everywhere we get hot. Some places will get cold and some places will get hot. Right. And this is because we have a, a situation whereby different things are happening rapidly. Mm -hmm. Different mm -hmm. things are happening. Different things are changing. So you see hear people talk about, and that's where, this is where Nigerians try to deviate. You talk about, oh, melting of the polar caps and all these different things. And we say, oh, you mean, it doesn't really affect Nigeria. But the problem is that when some of those things happen, you have cold coming in another area and warmth coming in another area. So what do we do that now leads to it? Going back to your question, mm -hmm. is that there are several, several causes of it. But the major thing that have been identified mm -hmm. are greenhouse gases. Again, in lemon stems. Right. These are basic, there are some of the gases that we emit from, from our cars, from our cars, from our cars yeah. our generators, yeah. from deforestation, yeah. from waste, and the, the one that most people don't even know about, mm. from agriculture. Uh, how really? Agriculture? Yeah, from your cow dung, oh. or your manure, or your sport fruits. I, I thought everything from... <laughs> Explain that from for a minute. Everything from agri... Um, like anything waste and all... It's, it's good, organic, it goes, it's it goes, good. Yeah, it plants, plows back yeah. and it's organic and it's okay. good for the environment. So that's new for me. <laughs> okay, that, it's, it's good that it's new again to make sure that we, we begin to shift away from the myth into the reality. Mm -hmm. Is that we have that situation where there's several gases involved. The one that those mentioned from the cars are called carbon monoxide. They are not carbon monoxide is not a greenhouse gas. It reacts with oxygen in the in the atmosphere to form carbon dioxide, oh, okay. which now becomes the greenhouse gas. Mm. Oh. So that is one. Two is methane. Now, methane comes from the cow dung. It comes from the manure. That, that foul odor that you yeah. smell. It comes from the sport fruits. Methane is even more, it, it has a global, higher global warming potential wow. than carbon dioxide. But in so, that case, we can't help it. No, we, we can help it. And that's why we're trying to say reduce your waste. So where you have issues where, and that's why, uh, I don't know why you've been hearing about this um, plant beef. Plant beef is the kind of beef that yeah, you know, I from cow. It on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so, I watched it on, yeah. So, by the time they tell you how much um, water, mm -hmm. as well as the crops, as well as the, the methane that the, the cow gets to exude just yeah. to get that beef, all the things that contribute to climate change, people are beginning to look into the vegetable beef. They call it the plant-based beef. And so, we're not saying it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Again, we're just trying to tell you, you just have to... You know, this is your plant-based beef, mm. you know. I want to, I want to, 
I would try to understand mm. how affordable that would be for yeah, the yeah. average person. It's because it's going to be expensive. It's very expensive. So that's that's so I won't even go there. Go there. <laughs> but you see, um, I I studied physics in school, and mm. I I know biogases now. For instance, that that comes out of um, what's it called when you have waste that is mm. trapped under i mean that was why we had the fire in um Olushoshi for a very long time yes you know because of the the gases that are being trapped there you know so that one in itself i i understand that from the study i did in india they bottle those gases and they use them for home use and they plant they power things with the gas but we are not even doing any of those things here in nigeria so how do we begin to adapt you know, when it comes to, we already know that the weather is changing. Last night was hell. Very, like very a hot. heat wave. Like we were driving back in the <laughs> car. We were feeling the air conditioner was coming this way because we left the car parked, you know, and the heat was coming from the back. The air conditioner was, we were wondering what was happening yeah. right inside the car. Yes. And the, the air conditioner was actually working very well. And that's Lagos. So that is just Lagos. <laughs> so how do we begin to adapt in terms of, okay, this climate is, is changed. In fact, it's not climate change. It, no, it's that's not changed. changing. It has changed. So what and what are the things that we're supposed to be doing right now, you know, to just like quick fixes and let us manage it better? Okay, so um, that, that notion is what we're trying to, to let people know that uh, there's really no quick fix. Really? What happened, what is happening right now took over 300 years to manifest and it's not going to take overnight to, to get it yeah. sorted out. It took a lot of time from the industrial revolution all the way down to this stage. When mm -hmm. we started using steam to when we started using generators yeah, and we found okay. ourselves in this, yeah. when we started extracting oil. Right. So all that culminated into this. So you're saying it's too late to prevent climate change? No, I'm not saying it's too late. Either. There's no quick fix. So okay. we have, it's got to be a long-term change. Plan as well. Right. And the plan must be there. And that's why we call it the climate change adaptation plan. Okay. So you adapt and you mitigate. So we use the beef as a particular perfect example. We're not trying to tell people to stop eating beef, but you practice sustainable agriculture. So maybe when you have your cow dung, you make sure that it's not exposed to the atmosphere and you quickly turn it into compost. So you don't not leave your cow dog in the in the food. Oh, so does this does this now say that people that are rearing cow, it's best to rear them in a in an enclosed probably an enclosed ranch or something. Enclosed ranch, whereby as compared to the the open grazing and the open the grazing and the, I mean partitioning uh, adding where you have that enclosed ranch where you can use the, the dung, the dung convert, them to convert them to compost. Yeah. So when you're making compost, it's usually covered. You have the mixing right. bacteria act on it and you have your manure. Now, that reduces, because the bacteria has acted on the methane. It reduces, right. I mean, your immunity. Again, we're not saying it's going to be perfect. For instance, nobody will tell you, oh, they're facing out uh, fossil cars or fossil fuel uh, cars in, right. in two years. No, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to take some time. But the most mm -hmm. important thing is that it has to start now. So the changes have to start now. And some of the changes are basic lifetime changes. So a typical example, like I always tell people, um, is this. If we all claim to be climate change enthusiasts, mm -hmm. how much have we tried to cut down our carbon emissions? Is it possible? Have we tried to follow? I am cutting. Have we tried to follow? Okay, in my house, house, I don't run generators any longer. Good. I have, tr I have um, life. You see, on in our studio, yes, we have life plants, <laughs> life plants in our studio. Okay. okay. And we have. Wait, hold on. Let me finish. We have life I'm plants waiting. everywhere. Mm -hmm. We're using solar panels and we're using inverters. Fantastic. So we, I don't run generators in my house. Awesome. So how well am I doing? So I do you're doing great. <laughs> hold on. Now, <laughs> how about the person out there who maybe has a uh, local term, I pass my neighbor generator, mm -hmm. who obviously can't afford an inverter mm -hmm. and drives a car that they've been driving for the past 12 years and mm -hmm. it's like, let's just mm -hmm. wing let's this just thing this, through. Yeah. You know, so people like that, how do they help? Oh, yeah, a I mean, yeah, a lot of Nigerians are living mm -hmm. in that situation and maybe other parts of Africa and the world. So for people like this, how do they help with this um, 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 making the, uh, the environment safer? Yeah. Yeah. So without having to suffer for it or, you know, give, let go of all those things that make life easier for them. Yeah. So th that's why at this stage we like to always discuss um, the common term sustainability. Right. We want a situation whereby we won't say because we're focusing too much on the environment, people will begin to okay. lose their means of livelihoods or economies will crumble. And that's why the last um, COP they did on climate change didn't work out because a lot of countries were like, we are going to rely on coal for our economy. You can't tell us to stop that. People will go into poverty. Mm. So that balance is what people need to find. 
So for someone that is using the, um, that kind of generator, for instance, I mean, it's not just stopping them from having a garden. Again, it's all about having that commitment to say, this is what I want to How do. How do you have a garden no, when it, you live in a rented apartment? Now you're giving more context. Now more context. Yeah, is because it's reality. So, he can continue with the generator, but what of transportation? Why must he carry that car? Why can't he follow a colleague to work? Reduce his own emissions. Mm -hmm. So it's not every time that, I mean, and even the generator sometimes, I mean, it saves some money mm. and buy a rechargeable fan. Because sometimes when you look at, this is a better pass my people, like you said, cannot take more than the fan, and most times it's small television. So let's even rule out the television. Right now you can watch the televisions on your smartphones. And let's even rule all that out. What it needs is fan. So these days, rechargeable fan is the same price with generator. The, I mean, a rechargeable fan will cost around the same price with that small generator. Okay. So you can still have to do that. These are little things I that like, I like make what you're life saying better. To, um, to, but you see this now, mm -hmm. this is just one person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, because I believe that for, for this to work, we have to partner. Definitely. So we have the individual, we have the community, and we have the government. And the industry. And the industry, mm -hmm. right? The biggest okay. Yes. Players. Which are the manufacturers <laughs> yes. and all of them. Now, I, I want to narrow it down. What do you think? You have, we've said what the individuals can do mm -hmm. to help fight this changing climate. What can, um, um, or what's it called, the, the community do? What can the government do? And what can the industry do? Government, for instance, um, cars that are being brought into Nigeria, I'm not talking about every other part of the world, mm -hmm. are cars that probably have spent 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, you, they're already coming dead. And we, we still have those cars running on our roads. We see it, you know. I mean, a friend of mine couldn't fly from Port Harcourt. She had to do a road trip. Why? There's soot all over. They can't fly. Wow. There's yeah. no visibility. That, that, that British Airways cancelled flights yeah, canceled last flights. week yeah. because there was so much uh, dust in the air. We couldn't, there was no visibility. Mm -hmm. So we have this thing is real. So we are not really even arguing whether it's a myth anymore reality. because yeah. the truth is that it's a reality for us. We're, we're feeling it. It's just that we didn't know the name. So tell us, what can these arms, what can we begin to, or if they're not doing it, how can we now push them to be accountable to the climate? Okay, uh, so uh, let's pick the industry first. Because I believe uh, a lot of movement is happening in the industry. And the movement is happening because of investors. So these days we have investors trying to say, well, if you're not practicing sustainable days or climate smart technology, we're not going to invest. So that has really pushed a lot of industries. And I mean industries, I'm talking about, I mean, multinational industries, not mm -hmm. the ones that are at the back of somebody's house making plantain chips. Mm -hmm. Standard industries now, and which are the biggest emitters. So mm -hmm. we're talking about maybe the cement manufacturers and some of all that. Right. They are beginning to look at ways in which they can reduce. Now, we're not saying they could permanently stop. Mm -hmm. They have to reduce. So that, that shift is what we're looking at. And then for government, it's all about policies. So either you bring out policies to make sure that these industries adapt, or you try to put in regulations that you turn into laws and you tell even people to adapt. Also, you have to create that enabling environment for people to, number one, understand the consequences of their actions, which mm -hmm. is what is happening right now. Yeah. People don't really understand the consequences of, of their actions, That's of burning true. waste, or, or cutting down trees. They don't really understand it. They don't believe we are attacking the environment. They don't know that ripple effect is coming. Yeah. It's affecting security, affecting everything. agriculture, everything mm. in the country. So when, we, when people first understand, which is government's responsibility, make people understand it, as well as the media. I mean, if government isn't do, going to do that, we can push them to do that. Then set policies and procedures for people to follow. Because again, this thing didn't, uh, it's not something you teach in secondary schools or primary schools. It's something that people still need to learn. So even when you've given them the consequences, they're going to set up policies or procedures or acts for them to follow. They must learn it. So it's not something you, but you bring you know, out. Somebody is asking something. a question. Sorry, okay. one, one minute. He said, is the noticed climate change, is it negative? Now, that is the, the perspective that is quite um, challenging for okay. some scientists. So over time, because the, the negative has always outweighed the positive, we forget the positive. But to be honest, there are positives. So we've had the situation whereby climate change has enhanced the growth of some crops. We've had situations whereby climate change has you know, made some areas livable, right. even though they didn't want it, but that made some areas livable. Some areas, uh, some lowland areas, due to drought and shifting of some of these uh, floods, I don't want to use too many technical terms, mm. I've made some lowland areas become, I mean, lift up, yeah. while some mm. other areas have become flooded. Become flo yeah. So, but the, the negative outweighs the positive, and so sometimes you just 
it's better to go silent on the, on the positive before people start thinking that you're praising climate change. Wow. But there are positives. It's just it's, it's a two-way thing. So like I said, so there's some this, plants that go this well. This flooding this that we're experiencing in Lekki here, mm -hmm. is it a result of... <laughs> hold on. Is it a result of climate change or we're just, you know, exploring lack nature? Lack of planning. No. A lack of planning, so, yes. And, that, and that's why, again, we need to get the, the, the effects of climate change clearly. There are right. some effects that are a result of global warming, and there are some effects that are just poor, plan, poor planning. Global warming means that, I mean, when you have that effect whereby, if you said in, in Lagos, for instance, mm -hmm. your rainfall is meant to be 2,500 millimeters, and you are recording 5,000 millimeters, that's climate change. But if you are recording that 2,005 and you are experiencing flooding, that's not climate change. That's poor planning. That's poor planning. So if, if you had your, if you had projected that your sea level mm -hmm. would be at maybe 10, 10 meters, You've projected that for the eco Atlantic city and everything is going fine and suddenly becomes 20 meters that is not uh, that is climate change but right. if you mean that that 10 meters and then eco Atlantic city is flooded that's mm. poor planning so <laughs> it, it, that change must happen before we begin to uh, point fingers right. okay so we yeah. have more questions for you so we're going to keep you here <laughs> okay. and um, femi idowadegoke will join us right after the break please stay with us <laughs> 